Hey guys, Martin here from TSI. I'm really excited. I want to do a little video because the pretty sure I mentioned a few weeks ago in just one of the vlog update vids that I was looking at ordering myself a chest rig. So kind of semi-retiring the plate carrier a bit, especially in the the wet uh, the uh, the hot weather where I don't want full body coverage and not use the battle belt too much on the big long days because the weight on my hips gets a bit achy. So I wanted to go with the idea of the body usage um, but not in the sense of a full plate carrier whether it's weighted or not but just not full weight. Uh, that one I do carry 10 kilo plates in it which is obviously a bit excessive but without the weights in it it doesn't sit right. It um, the weight on the back from the plate from the water, you know, pulls it right up under your front. So I wanted to go with a chest rig. So I had everything around here, and my upper body is clear, still with harnesses and something that I can put my camel back attached to it. So the H harness or a crossover style harness. So for weeks and weeks and weeks, I've been looking at heaps of different options, and I kept gravitating back to Plat Attack down in Victoria, Aussie made, Australian company. The one that kept attracting me was the JW of the Peacekeeper series. Now, it just seemed to have heaps of real estate for what it was worth. Um, $300 and in multicam, it just seemed perfect. So anyway, I decided that early this year I was going to buy it, went to buy it, and they were suddenly out of stock of multicam. They had multicam Tropic. I didn't really want the green out of stock. So I flicked Plat Attack a message just on Facebook and one of their staff got back to me and said sorry I didn't even realize we'd <laughs> out of stock of them uh, but they were made for a military contract and once they're gone they're gone they don't make them again but he did say hang tight for a couple of weeks because we've got the new Mark V Peacekeeper coming so I said have you got any pictures and he said well there was a sneaky peek on Instagram about three weeks ago so I flicked back and kind of showed a little bit but not much Anyway, so the week went by and I messaged them again saying any rough time frame. This was Thursday last week and they said we should be launching them next week. Okay, and he said, but we do have the JWs in Multicam again. Chatted with Iggy and the boys and they all said just wait to check out the Mark V properly. Come Friday, the Mark V was online. They relaunched it the next day. The pictures really made it look good. So three hundred dollars or two sixty in a plain color, so you could get it in Ranger Green or just a tan um, for two sixty or two ninety nine. Same price as the JW and the yeah and the JW in Multicam, and it looks so good. I ordered it on the spot. So the day it was released, I ordered it, and it arrived today. Heart Attack even have their own little shipping bags, which is really cool. I have had it out the bag, so this is not an unboxing video. But I wanted to talk through it, because this is really good stuff, okay? So, straight out of the bag, it comes with two harness setups. So this one was on it, but I've already swapped it over. This is the normal harness setup that would be over your shoulders, you know, obviously, back to front, and then it would crossing over behind. I didn't want that one. It also came with the Chicom, as they call it, H harness, which, same front straps, but has the H across the back. Now, I wanted this one, thought it might be easier for my camelback attachment, which is over here somewhere. All right, so... Let's talk through the chest rig. So I'll chuck it on just so you can get a bit of a visual of what it's all about. Let's release the back strap. All right, so chest rig. Doesn't cover my chest. It's across my stomach. Straight off the bat, lighting's a little bit dark for you. Straight off the bat, it's got three double thickness mag pouches on the front here. So take my mags, they're elasticated, but up or down, whichever way you want to go, that's two mags. So this is six mags here if you want it, or 
a surprise grenade or something like that. So six mags across the front straight off the bat, that's winning. Not just one in each pouch, that's two comfortably in the pouch. Now, these flaps do tear off as well, so, and you do have an elastic bungee there, so I probably won't have three flaps. I might run one without the flap on there, and two covered, so that the first two that are not covered become my quick access, my most likely to use straight off the bat and keep these ones covered to keep dirt and dust and everything out of there. So that in itself was winning. The JW pouch only had two of these because it had a zip down the guts. As we go a bit wider we do have a blank panel of two molly webs wide on both sides which is perfect to be honest because that means you can add what you want. I will probably add a radio pouch in here, probably rip off Something like one of these from my play carriage is a 5.11 radio pouch. So that one, if it sits in there, it can hold two mags. Or it can hold a 600ml bottle, or a radio, or anything you like. You could almost double stack two there if you wanted to. The usage of space is brilliant. Um, and as you walk, walk around the side, on this side and this side is this exactly the same pouch. This is brilliant. So these pouches are pretty huge. You probably, you, it does list that you can get it a one liter Nalgene bottle in here which is the square edged um, thermoplastic kind of bottles. So this pouch is pretty huge. Double zippers and the zips are all, are all paracord and they've all got shrink wrap on them. Inside this pouch you've got a small pouch in the front an elastic pa elasticated pouch behind it so if you wanted to have mags in here You've got two more mags in there, and they won't fall out, they're elasticated. Wait, there's more. And behind that is another huge webbed pouch made of this webbing material. So that would be if you're wanting to allocate that spot specifically to a water bottle, or for example, two more mags. And yet I've got room in there for still the original two mags. So that's four mags in there. Oh wait, look. These pockets are epic. Another mag. So if you were really going somewhere where you wanted to have a lot of mags, that's <laughs> six mags. Six, eight, ten, twelve. 16 mags in four pockets. So these pockets are really huge. How good is that? Absolutely brilliant. Um, obviously I'm not going to run six mags in that pocket. This pocket's going to be everything other than mags, I guess. So gel, a bottle of gels, potentially radio if it's not here, snacks, water, tools, batteries, everything else you carry with you potentially dead rag, everything we carry on a milsim in here. But I've got the same pocket again this side, so tons of real estate. I've got more real estate in this than I was carrying on my plate carrier. Compass, book, notebook, two more pockets, one either side on the front of this pouch, molly on the back, molly on the front, so that's expandable. If I wanted to put radio pouch on the back of this pouch here, so it's round the back out of the way, I can. If I wanted to have a mag pouch here, but then a small other pouch there, I can. This rig is brilliant. But wait, there's more. Just started to rain. I hope you can't hear it pouring down. In behind, so between me and this pouch on this cummerbund panel, this is going to be a bit hard to see, but there's another pocket in here so in behind that pouch one mag two mag three mags pretty squishy unless I pack them a bit better that could actually go four mags in behind that pouch so it's a soft very soft elasticated rear lining in that one I'll show you when I take it off in a second 
So that's a comfort kind of pouch. So that one there might be best for compass, map, anything that you don't want too out in the open. So we've got that on this side and this side with this elastic bungee. Of course, if you put something bulky in there, it's going to push everything else out. So in between these two elasticated panels, we have a full... Let me pull these down out of the way until we see a bit better. There's a full width zipper pocket through the back here. Or, if you choose to, it can be Velcro. Your choice of which way you want to go with it. So, why both? Well, I think it's probably most likely that if you were going to use it for something that you're not going to access too often, you'd use the zip to open it. But if you don't want the zip, if you only want Velcro, and <laughs> the whole thing comes out. Because they put Velcro on both sides, hook and loop, on both sides of the zip. So now I've just got a Velcro panel. This is brilliant. So what if I'm wanting to carry more than 16 mags? Well, I could get a Kydex or a plastic mag infill panel that can have you know, three mags all sitting widthwise side by side, or even just the two. In behind my other already six mags. One, two, three. But that's more likely going to be a map panel or a document panel, something you probably don't want to access too often, or even a sneaky panel that people can't see. So again, I. These guys really know what they're doing. I'm super impressed with it. Underneath at the bottom here, <clears throat> there is a really strong uh, Velcro pocket. Now it's not really a pocket. It's actually the attachment for if you want to wear the, the, the dangler, the scrote pack or the fanny pack, whatever you want to call it. So that allows you to have an expansion down below. <clears throat> not something I'm going to do. I don't want it getting lower and jangling around and bashing me in the balls. And I don't think I need it. This, across the bottom here, we haven't shown this one. There's a full width of the center panel. No internals in the pocket. It's just a wide open pocket. Perfect for tools, batteries, and any other bits and pieces that are just needing real estate that you don't want to put in here. It does also come with a weavable molly elastic panel here, normally for a tourniquet. And this one has got two elastic loops for tourniquet or glow sticks or anything else. And they are designed to go on the bottom here, underneath that lower expansion panel. You weave that through the molly, there's one across the bottom there. Or of course you can use paracord or anything else to molly off that to have a dangler. This one can go on here, or on the back here, <clears throat> or up here. <laughs> so built in to the harness, we do have fast clips on both sides. They do have an elastic tether in there as well, a quietener. Molly up both sides on the chest strap, wiring or camelback loops on both sides here. Now, it does only have the three, I think it is, or two molly webbings. It doesn't go all the way over, but that's, that's perfect. That's all you need. You've got fast clips to go over the top of these zips here. So let's say if this is bulging full and the zip won't do up, you've got the fast clip to do it up. Elasticated tethers. A fast clip waistband to come around the back here. And obviously clip onto the back there. So this is absolutely far surpasses what I thought it was going to have. The JW did have this mesh panel, but without the zip option. <clears throat> Didn't have the, the rear panels in here, and had a different setup where these front pockets were on the back. But this works absolutely brilliant. I don't believe the JW had the removable flaps, because I don't think it had the bungee tethers on there. And it didn't have this 
horizontal pouch, which I didn't think I liked initially. <clears throat> Excuse me. In looking at the Mark IV, <coughs> I didn't think I liked this, but I definitely do now. This really works well. I really like it. So, what are my plans for it? Well, my plans are to put my camel back, just the black one, obviously. The straps are in the rear panel. The camelback is going to go around about there. I'm just going to use the camelback tether points and attach it right across this section here. So it will hang down from here and then the waistband, I can actually feed the waistband straight through the rear panel of the camelback. So this will actually go through the camel back here, pop out here, so it would be attached at the bottom of my back and up on here. Now, this also allows me to have this top pocket, the lower pocket, and three liters of water on me. Yes, it's black, I don't care. I was gonna go with this in tan, but I decided just to go multicam anyway. Hell, I could just get the tan one as well. But this is um, bloody brilliant. I'm super happy with it. The quality is just beautiful. I can't see any threads hanging off anywhere. Everything is beautifully finished. You can really tell that Plat Attack make <clears throat> military contract stuff where there's no room for error. There's a pocket, seems to be a pocket up the back here as well. That might just be an opening where it's not sewn. Interesting. So there we go guys. Really, really happy with it. This is absolutely superb. I love it. I can't wait to get out and have a game and rig it up. Bringing a couple of pouches over from here if I need to. Something off the plate carrier if I need to, but probably anything will come from that is my, uh, most importantly, Secret Squirrels patch. Yeah. Radio and all the all the gear of course. One other thing I thought I'd just show real quick is I got myself last weekend was it this weekend coming? Last weekend was supposed to be the first NRL twenty two match for the year. Unfortunately it was cancelled due to COVID, postponed until the end of the year. I decided to get myself a new shooting bag. This is a heavy weighted bean bag designed for shooting off kind of awkward surfaces. So let's say there's a ladder stage. You smack the bag onto it and it just sits there. It gives a, an easy perch to chuck your rifle on. So it is a U shape. You can put it any way you want. It's a heavy pouch, it just, just plops. But it's designed to be kind of over awkward situations. So you can chuck the gun on there, build yourself a divot if you can. So your gun sits nice and away you go. So this is branded Redacted Actual, but it's through War Gear Australia, I think it was. I did buy it online, so I apologize for... That's right, Warlord Gear Australia. Sorry if you can't see it very well with the lighting. <clears throat> so this is really cool, really happy with it. It's a really nice kind of waxed, very heavy material. So it would be super tough. I also got from them a very light, this is more of a rear bag. You can have it, your hand hooked through it so you can just squeeze the bag and have, you know, it's mostly held in here when you've got the butt stock, say, rested on it. Or again, it can be just another basic perch bag. Slide your rifle, put your rifle through this, put your forehand through it, and then that can actually dangle under the gun as a little bit of a, a pad as well. Really, really good gear. Made in Townsville area, I believe. <clears throat> Aussie veteran owned and made. Really nice quality, great stuff. Redacted actual and Warlord gear. So, that's it from me. <clears throat> I'm gonna head off. I might just show you one other thing. I'm not really a gas shotgun kind of person, but I got this for a steal. Um, 
Effectively, I got this for the equivalent of about 100 bucks. Was missing the stock and the grip had a gouge in it. Missing the muzzle brake thing. Did need a repair. The poor guy had been ripped off by a gel ball shop other than Asriel's because this was originally an Asriel's product that was bought from Asriel's and then resold by another retailer <clears throat> for $275 more than Asriel's retailed it for. Poor customer didn't know that, of course. It failed. They charged him $200 to repair it and couldn't fix it. He was so done with it. I got it off for him for 100 bucks and fixed it up. I offered to fix it and give it back to him, but he didn't want it. He just said, I'd just rather 100 bucks and get out of it. So that's pretty cool. Remington 870 Tactical. The grip had a big gouge out of it. I don't know how someone had managed it. So I had this Magpul MOEK um, just in the drawer that I took off a rifle. I think this was on the Hauer. And chucked it on. Perfect fit. And this is actually also a real Magpul CTR that normally runs on my 22. Why not put it on here when it's not on the 22? There we go, guys. Thank you. Catch you later on.